This podcast is produced by Visionary Studios. Hey everyone, I'm Mitchell Rail. And I'm Wade Clausen. And welcome back to Let's Unpack That. Today we are joined by, honestly, the hardest guest I've ever booked in the history of this podcast, <laughs> like the hardest person to schedule. Out of everyone we've had, this person is the hardest. Please welcome. them. <laughs> you can to me, I'm gone. I'm not going to see, I'm like, I had to go. <laughs> welcome, Matt Johnson. Hi guys, what's up? Living life, yeah. breathing yeah. air. How are you doing? How was your drive up? It was great. I made Rob drive up for me. I was just like, I'm gonna ride shotgun, do you mind? He's like, oh yeah, sure. So, okay. it was nice. Mm. Milwaukee's cute. Everyone slanders her in Chicago, but she <laughs> isn't as bad as Everyone makes it seem, in my opinion. I haven't been here since we did like a like a grade school trip to the Jelly Bean Factory that's like nearby. Maybe I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Isn't I don't know. the Jelly Bean Factory in Kenosha? Maybe. Uh, who's to say? <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and where you're from? My name is Matt Johnson. I'm from Chicago. I was um, born in Aurora, Illinois, an hour or so west of Chicago. I went to DePaul University. I was like the youngest of four, so um, I was definitely had like youngest child syndrome, I feel. I've always been like star of the show, the family, I feel. <laughs> you just mentioned that you w came to Chicago for DePaul, yeah. right? And you came to DePaul because you had a boyfriend who was also there, correct? That was just like a contributing factor. Okay. It was just like, okay, great. Two birds, one stone. I knew I wanted to stay in Chicago just because I am like such a mama's boy, like family oriented person. Mm -hmm. I had I'd visited so many times over my senior year to visit this person I was dating at DePaul that like it kind of already felt like my campus at that point. You know, I was so like familiarized with everything. I loved what DePaul had to offer, especially with what I was going to school for, which was marketing. Just made the most sense. And then the fact that I was dating somebody was just kind of like a win-win. So did that relationship continue into college? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, then a little bit of yes, and then indefinite no. It was very tumultuous towards the end, actually. So I go into like senior year, wrap it up. The summer going in, there's like all this like anticipation, like, fuck yeah, like college is about to start. I have like a boyfriend, it's all set. like feeling the big dog on campus because I already know everything. But one week before I was supposed to like start school, I found out that he was cheating on me. So that was really fun, really How cool. Dare he. It worked out for the best, you know, going in single, especially in Chicago, especially like a couple blocks away from Boys Town. Made for a very um, social uh, freshman year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. How would you describe the gay scene in Chicago? Very like expansive. There's definitely lots of like different cliques, but for the most part, everyone kind of gets along. There's not too much. <laughs> Watch, everyone's gonna be like, bullshit. At least I don't <laughs> experience like too much drama, I guess. Um, I kind of like pride myself on having a lot of different friend groups. Like I have like friends who are LGBTQ from DePaul. I have friends that I've met through like sports leagues for like Stonewall sports. And then just like friends of friends. I'm a big fan of like bringing different groups of friends together as well. That's awesome. Beyond like the gay scene after graduation, like what were you doing work-wise? Yeah, so all through DePaul, I was part of like a co-ed business fraternity called Delta Sigma Pi. I'm like, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> so I had like a array of different internships that were great. It like really set me up. And then at the very beginning of my senior year, I got a full-time offer from Groupon and their headquarters are in Chicago. Okay. So I was on their like marketing and sales team. And I started working the July um, right after graduation. And unfortunately, if you were not like an employee at Groupon for more than a year, you were like automatically furloughed when like the pandemic hit. So that was super big bummer. It was like, you're so excited, like hit the real world. And like, you just got your degree and everything. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, ah. Pull the rug out from under you. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go fuck myself really quick. <laughs> How do you kind of pivot in that situation? What do you do when the world's going crazy? You thought you had this great job and then that ends up falling through. Like what was your move? I was taking class where I instruct now at Studio 3 as a client. And one of the coaches, they were like, Matt, can you like stay after really quick? I was like, what did I do? They basically were like, have you ever taught before? Have you ever coached before? I had said, no, I had not coached anywhere before. And they were like, what do you like to? What do you like to audition? And I was like, sure, might as well. My audition date was the Monday or Tuesday right after like the world shut down. Okay. So like, <laughs> didn't have my audition date, got furloughed. It was just like, not, not good. Mm -hmm. And um, the relationship I was in at the moment too was, getting pretty tumultuous. Um, you're like, surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> just like everything was like hitting the fan. Yeah. Very much so like a busy body. Like I hate 
being still and I hate just like not feeling productive with what I'm doing at any time. So I was like, I might as well just like go back to school. So I went back to get my master's degree. So I reapplied to DePaul, they can't get rid of me. I just started back up there. What's your master's in? My master's is in marketing and then parentheses, like strategy and planning. You do it all. So let's go now over to fitness. It's a huge part of your life. And you just mentioned that that was like kind of your switch when you got a load. Everyone sees like people that are doing fitness classes. They see people that are instructors, but kind of what is that like for you behind the scenes like how are you putting together your classes how are you organizing yeah all of that this is so funny because i just had like my annual review yesterday so i feel like i'm kind of like regurgitating what we went over behind the scenes i have like a rule with my stuff i never repeat a playlist so like my spotify is literally just like scrolling 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 like playlist after playlist i take like a lot of pride in that i took class like religiously as like a client before i became an instructor so i used to actually work for berries in chicago i like helped them open up two of their studios in river north and lincoln park i had taken like some odd like 500 classes or so before I even start like cross training at Studio 3. So I know what a good class looks like as a client and I hate feeling like I'm taking like a repetitive class. I try to make sure that like my classes are like very fun, engaging, try to make sure like the music's popping, good vibes, the entire thing. Also everyone's like miserable, let's be honest. When you're working out, you're like, there are so many fucking things I could be doing right now. So I try to like kind of incorporate some like comedy into my class as well. Like I'm always like cracking like jokes and things like that and try to make it like as inclusive and less intimidating as possible. What's your two go genre of music for Spotify? Oh, God. Players? I love house music and I love Ariana Grande. So like you're going to hear like Gorgon City, Ariana, some like John Summit, some like little mix. It's like a nice little fluctuation of that. But like you're making a new playlist every single day. Yeah. How wow. much of that is pulling from other playlists? you've already made and just putting the songs like in a different order or are you always putting new songs and like how are you searching for all yeah, this right. i'm like giving like a little tip to instructors um <laughs> so what i do is i have a like music bank i guess that has like 2,000 songs in it like anytime i come across a song that's like good i throw it in the bank right i'm very like meticulous like type a like i type out all my programs and there's like three columns and they're all color coded i'll like see how long like the pushes are i'll see like when like sprints are or like when like something like more rigorous on the floor is occurring and i'll go to how you can like filter your songs on the playlist and I'll just like filter it by time like duration and then I'll just match that up perfectly so I like have like my Apple watch with me but I never have to worry about like skipping a song it just syncs up for me perfectly that's so tech of you your friend Dylan was on a few months ago yeah, and Dylan, I, we, we, we mentioned that I did a spin class yeah. and the music was just not it like the music's so important in a workout class yeah I remember one time oh god I'm not gonna use names but I was taking class one time and it's like a really really hard push and they're playing like Asher Ross like I love college I love college yeah and I <laughs> I love drinking, yeah, and I love wit. I'm like, why am I working out to this right now? I'm like, am I, what happened? The like, font's like a wormhole. Like, what's going on? What are some of your favorite parts of being an instructor? I love like just the, like the amount of people I've been able to meet and like the cool opportunities that have, like come with that. Someone that takes my class frequently, her name is Jo. She has this like really cool like fashion line for like swimwear. It's so cool. And she's like, oh, like, do you want to come like model this like new line I have at Soho House? I was like, absolutely. Like, it's fucking go it seems like the perfect gig for you like i feel like you're just thriving yeah. at it i know you've gotten like tons of accolades and awards for what you've done so clearly you're you're slaying mm -hmm. i excel like way more quickly than i thought i would maybe like a year or so into instructing i'm like driving home from like the grocery store and the ceo is like calling me i'm like the, i'm like when the ceo just like calls you out of the blue i'm like literally like what did i do wrong <laughs> i'm like, like who complained like what did i say because I can get like a little raunchy in class, but it's like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone's ever complained about it, but uh, I'm like, I'm driving. He's like, can you pull over? Now I'm like really sweating. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? And he's just like, you got class pass instructor of the year for like, I was like freaking out. So like, that's cool. Just a lot of like cool doors have opened up from being able to work at Studio 3. I'm really, really appreciative of like the entire community. When yeah. did you first like know the impact that you had with your clients. Shout out Summer and Michael. Hi guys. This like beautiful couple. They're the best people I know. Sadly, they moved to Colorado, so they don't live in Chicago anymore. I had taught like a pride class and after like watching them like on their like little fitness couple journey, or whatever, coming to my class all the time, they asked me to officiate their wedding. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> like I was like, that was the first time I was like, holy shit. I like started crying in the lobby. It was really, really cute. That's like so cute to have like that impact on people and like so like meaningful too to like show that your hard work is paying off. And like, I think fitness is something that a lot of times is so hard for people to like keep motivated to do it and I think having like an instructor that's like really putting in the
the work and like making cool stuff. Like it makes all the difference. Yeah. It makes like people actually succeed in like achieving their fitness goals. I have like a no asshole rule or like a no cool rule in like my class too. I'm like for instance on the tread, which is can be like really intimidating for somebody who's like not a runner or like just getting to the fitness journey. I never tell you like a certain speed to hit. I use three terms, comfortable. It's just like, you're like a Lincoln Park mom, just like on your leisurely Sunday morning jog. Uncomfortable, you're like missing the CTA or like max effort. You just saw your ex at a bar. You're trying to get the fuck out of there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we need to come take a come class. And I'm like mm-hmm. so like out of shape. I just do cardio. Yeah. Like it's my soul method of working out yeah so like i probably would like literally be like a dying oh, rat no, you'll class. be fine let's kind of move on to like relationships so you have a boyfriend right yeah. now you guys have been dating for a little bit since um, may okay so it's kind of it's a lot more recent than people think so how did you guys meet this is a fun story summer of 2021 it was like august i was at like a random drag brunch and our friend who like owns slash like manages ds tequila they were doing like a live dj on a boat on the chicago river that was sponsored by red bull and it's gonna be a bunch of gay people i was like sign me up let's go so like our entire like a group we go on this boat and i see rob like in my peripheral and i meet him like <laughs> you know i'm like literally just like looking at him i had never seen him before because he had just like recently moved to the city and i catch my friend chase looking at me looking at him i turn back to chase and chase is like you like that guy. I was like, shut up. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> and he was there with somebody else too who was like ridiculously hot. So I was like, okay, I'll play nice. Like I'll like <laughs> let him do his thing. Yeah. And somehow we end up in the same Uber home, but it, like Chase and Matt are in the Uber too, my friends. And he and I both get out like right outside Roscoe's. It's kind of like a, uh, okay, see you later. And then I did not see him until St. Patrick's Day. So that was August. I did not see him once until March. I had seen him on social media. I thought it was like really hot. And I think we had like replied to each other's stories like a couple times, just being like hard eyes emoji. You know, I never thought anything about it because I never saw him. But we were both at like sidetrack on for St. Patrick's Day. And I remember seeing him and I, <laughs> liquid courage, we love to see it, walk up to him. I don't know like what the conversation was, but soon after we're just like macking like in the middle of like side trek just like eating each other's faces like making out like hands are wandering <laughs> a little bit like it was like one of those like it was just like feral um and i remember god this is so he's gonna kill me oh, uh, he's, he's, he's like don't divulge too much about our six life i'm like all right fuck off uh, i'm like uh it got to the point where like we pulled apart and like the entire side of the bar was just like looking and being like, uh, and I was like, okay, we need to stop. And then he's also nine years older than me. So I asked him out on a date and he like, didn't take it seriously. He probably was just like, sure. Like I'll just like hang out this person. Maybe it's like a fuck, bud, like whatever, you know what I mean? And we ended up going on our first date, which was supposed to be like a two hour, like lunch and up being like a nine hour date. We like got lunch and we went for a walk in the park. It was like very like, and then we like got like a drink and everything. And my phone like died. I was supposed to go meet out with my two friends, Shannon and Kyle. And Kyle knew I was going on a date with Rob and he like didn't have my location because my phone died. And Kyle was like, Hey, my name's Kyle. I'm friends with Matt. You were the last person he was seen with. Um, do you know where he is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the story. Well, we have some questions about mm-hmm. relationships. So we asked the people, we put some things on social media. Some of these, you know, there's range. There's range in these questions. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is a light one. This okay. is a light one. This Let's comes, start light. Let's this, start comes, light. this comes from Victor. Hi, Victor. He says, describe your perfect date. Honestly, I would say it's the opposite of mine was with Rob. I would say like something short and sweet. That way you like don't learn too much about the person. So that leaves like opportunity to like learn more later. But I'd say just like, honestly, keep it casual. Just keep it kind of basic. Honestly, like just like grab like a drink, like on like a patio or something, maybe make it like an afternoon thing. So maybe you can meet up if it goes well, like make plans to meet up later that night at like another bar, like a party or whatever. So okay, so you would you go for an afternoon date. I go for I've, an afternoon. I've seen the debate between like a lot of people have said stay away from like when it's dark out, you know, because yeah. that turns into like a hookup, right? Totally. So it's like, do you get coffee or is it so more of like an afternoon yeah. dinner or like, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Do like an afternoon, maybe like a happy hour situation okay. even, you know? Okay. And then if like you guys hit things off, be like, all right, like what are you up to tonight? And then I would always like maybe play like those mind games in me a little bit. Always be like a little hard to get, I guess. <laughs> okay. Be like, where are you up tonight? Like I've got this thing going on, but like maybe like we could like mesh groups or like, you know what I mean? Or maybe we can meet up later or yeah. what are you doing tomorrow night is even better. I, I am a, very big fan of like a Thursday or like a Friday date, not a Saturday date. Okay, so then you could have a follow up on Saturday. Yeah. Again, my day with Rob was on Saturday. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> so we have a another question for you, Mr. Matt. When is the OnlyFans happening? 
Oh my god. <laughs> the amount of like, you know when you go to like Twitter, you like Twitter requests or whatever, kind of like Insta, that's like all it is. It's like OnlyFans, OnlyFans, OnlyFans. Never. It's never gonna happen. Like an actual OnlyFans is never gonna happen. I'm sorry. Well, sorry to Justin who said, quote, I'm begging. He also said, also, I have been such a big fan of Mr. Matt for years, and I hope he has a beautiful 2023 heart heart. Oh my heart. god. That's so nice. <laughs> Hi. Okay. This next one, Matt, I have been following you for years and I have a friend who hooked up with you and said it was quote, pretty kinky. I have been dating a guy for a little over nine months and he's great, but very vanilla in bed. I'm okay. definitely more adventurous than he is, more wild than mild. How should I go Hot. about opening up about my kinks in the bedroom without freaking him out or harming our sex life? First and foremost, like congrats to that person or like kudos to them for like not pushing the envelope like too mm -hmm. soon with that person, like kind of like mm -hmm. taking a back step to think about that. Um, so I would have to say that I have been in like a similar boat. So I, I wonder who the person I hooked up with was. Um, I, <laughs> I think like sex is fun. I feel like I always um, kind of compare sex to like going to like an ice cream shop. Like you're never gonna know like what you like until you try it, like sample it, like, you know, ask for like a little sample of a couple things. So they said that person's like very vanilla, right? So we love the ice cream analogy, right? Yeah. Maybe like just start incorporate like a couple things that aren't too crazy, that aren't gonna like whatever. Maybe save it for like a special occasion, like Valentine's Day is coming up. Maybe bring like a blindfold to kind of start like slow. You yeah. know what I mean? Or like, mm -hmm. Even doing something as simple as like changing the lighting in your room. Like I remember like I threw like red lights on in my bedroom and it was like hot. It like definitely like set the vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying you have to like whip out the harness and like the plugs and like whatever, you know, because that yeah. might be a little too much, too fast. But like start with like things like that. Or if you don't want to bring in like props or something like physical, maybe I don't know like what role they are in the bedroom, like top or bomb or whatever. It actually doesn't matter. But maybe incorporate like a little like spitting in the mouth or like some light choking or like some like scratches on the back or things like that. They're gonna be receptive of it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, you will know if someone likes it or not, right? So if they're like pulling away or if they feel like a little whatever, then try something else. And then if you go through like everything and they're still like not feeling it, maybe start to express that you do have more kind of like a, you know, like a wild side that in you that you're wanting to bring out and because it would pleasure you and maybe it would pleasure them too. And then maybe they'll be more likely to be a little more adventurous because they'll know that's pleasing you. And if you're being happy and getting off, then they should be happy. And if it's not, then it's not like, that's a good response, Matt. It's about communication. Yeah, yeah totally. This is from Manny. Matt, what is your dream threesome and why? Oh, okay. I'm going to come out and say, I love daddies. Like I am such a daddy's guy. Fuck, what's Fergie's ex-husband's name? Josh Jamal. Josh okay. Jamal. Do you know who that is? He's yes, the dad yeah. in Love, Simon, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people are like, what? <laughs> Damn, he was so fucking hot to me, I think. <laughs> and it's not just because he was, like, supportive dad. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that thing? It's, like, my, like, dream king is, like, go, like, meet up with an older man and just have him tell me he's proud of me. <laughs> 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 Definitely not that. Um, but, no, him and then Ryan Reynolds has been, like, the most long-standing, like, celebrity crush I've ever had. So next question here. Yeah. This is from one of your exes. Oh no. <laughs> oh God, was that the good one? Ex-boyfriend here, first time caller, long time listener. Some questions, I'm gonna ask you these separately. Okay. First question, are poppers in the shower a good idea? Derek, it's Derek. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, they are not, they are not a good idea and he knows why. Um, my mom was scared. <laughs> God, this is so bad. My mom was down in Florida, right? And she has this huge like walk-in shower. It's like um like a steam shower, right? Okay. We went down there for spring break and he came with. He tagged along with um my friend Sarah and Amy, and we were hooking up in the shower, and he's like well endowed, shout out Derek. He's gonna love that. <laughs> um and so we were like, oh, let's put poppers into the shower, sure soap and lube and whatever makes for a slippery hand, which does not mesh well with a glass bottle. And the poppers bottle fell off the shelf, spilled everywhere. And like the poppers like mixed with all the steam in the shower. And I was like, I'm seeing spots. Like I'm about to pass out. We just made like a bomb in the shower. <laughs> like I'm like, I need to get out of here. I'm like literally opening the door. Like <gasps> it was so, it was so dramatic, but it was like, yeah. So okay. no, they're not a good idea. Okay. He knows that. Everyone listen to his advice. Okay. <laughs> okay, next here. What are some tips you can give me to improve my sex game? Okay. Well, 
So the way I met Derek, I saw him at a bar in New York City. The first time I saw him, I literally pointed at him like this. I went, you. And did that. I was hammered. I was like 21. I was like, you. And I like caught them over. And that was that. Um, I think just like having more confidence, like, I don't know. I feel like people get like very like nervous. And they, the way I see it is like, if you strike out, you strike out. Chances are you're never going to interact with that person again. So like, Seize the moment, you know what I mean? Last one here. Can you give me some tips on how I can keep a long distance relationship with standing? That's from him too? Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes me so sad because that's why we broke up. <laughs> <laughs> I've done long distance like so many times in like different ways. Like my first relationship, I was in Aurora. He was in Chicago, it, not long distance, but like high school versus college. It felt like long distance and it, it was a hassle to get to and from. And then my next boyfriend, I decided to date somebody when I studied abroad, which was like a big mistake. So like I did that. And then after that, I dated someone that lived in Cleveland. So, and then Derek was in New York. So definitely had my share of long distance. Um, I, this sounds bad. I want to do it again. No. You wouldn't do it again? No, I want to. I know that's like not what people like want to hear. Well, I just is there, don't. Is there any lessons you learned that maybe you would give, like things that you learned, like maybe the things that made them fail that you think yeah, other I think, people can improve upon? Yeah, I think what I have now with Rob, like the open relationship thing, I think that would have definitely quelled a lot of the nerves and a lot of like the fights okay. and like insecurities that like arose from having like a long distance relationship. I wish I could go back and hit like the reset button on, if I could, like to... You know, honestly, to better me, like now, um, happy where I am now. But if I could go back and just kind of like relieve a lot of like the fights that happen, I think a lot of it would have been amended by having like a more open relationship esque type of situation okay. going on. And every it's different for everybody, but I think that definitely would have helped. I love public sex. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh God, I. Gosh, this is very bad. I have had my fair share, especially when I first started having sex with my first boyfriend. We were like deviants with that, I feel. We definitely, there was a um, whole lot of restraint. Uh, shout out to Paul University, provide a lot of uh, different spaces for that to <laughs> partake in. Uh, Where's the craziest <laughs> place you fucked up? Oh, God. You remember when um, like they did that like remake of Annie? With like Cameron Diaz. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I loved that one. I went with an ex and like our two other friends. They were girls. And we went to like at like 9 p.m. showing of this thing, like out in the burbs. Okay. And it's like one of those, like some of those movie theaters that had like the reclining seats, right? Yeah. yeah. And we were like the only ones in the theater. And like the two girls that we were with fell asleep. And I was really bored with the movie. And I just was like, armrest up. <laughs> just like kind of like went for it okay <laughs> to like completion which was a lot um <laughs> well it's a hard knock life plays in the background i love that song <laughs> yeah. really that, that that's really why cameron diaz took a break from acting she was like fuck this i'm out no, um, and then let's say one more place it is behind like a giant this is so bad behind a giant standing mirror at our house furniture and in the store in the store it was like right before closing <laughs> behind a mirror like a huge standing mirror. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, it was big. I promise. <laughs> At least it's not an IKEA. At least it's not like, there's one on the way home. Like wrap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have another question. This one wasn't originally asked for you, but we just received it from our website. So I thought that I would propose it and see if anyone has any advice to share. Okay. Hello, I am reaching out because I need some advice. I came out to my parents who are very conservative Christians that don't believe in homosexuality. It has been a struggle rebuilding that relationship with them and I was wondering how to go about that. I'm a gay Christian, I'm still learning what that means to me, and I have a boyfriend that I am proud of who I am. Thank you. So he's wondering if we have any advice on how to rekindle that relationship. I am such a fan of the saying, like time heals all wounds. Like. Unfortunately, like that's still something that people face today. I have the opposite. Like my coming out experience was like 10 seconds with my mom in a car. We were like coming back from a movie and she straight up was like, we're talking and I basically was like, hey, you know how I like girls? And she's like, oh, are you getting back together with your ex blank? I was just like, no, I have a boyfriend now. And she was like silent for 10 seconds, which obviously felt like 10 years. And then she was like, well, is he cute? <laughs> so that was mine. So it was very chill. But as I've had friends that have gone through that, that have not been as like fortunate to have like a family that's so immediately accepting. 
But more, I would say more often than not, those people who did have like a negative experience where the family or the parents or whoever were initially um, responsive to it and like accepting, um, they come around for the most part. They, they do. Because at the end of the day, they have time to, it's fresh. It's like a, they feel like the rug has probably been pulled out from under them. A lot of like people are like definitely like set in their beliefs, especially if they're like religious and stuff. But I would say just like give it a little time. I know that's like really hard to hear and it's not that helpful, but it at least like allows it to, to digest and for them to kind of like do their own like research and secondary research and reach out to other people and things like that. I mean, you're the same person as you always were. Yeah. So it shouldn't, yeah. it shouldn't really, the parents yeah. shouldn't really be affected by it too much, but I mean, they, they, they will be. Yeah. Mentally, they think that it, it's a big deal. But for you, it's who you are. And mm-hmm. it's just, it, yeah. it should just come to yeah, I think, I think a lot of times, like, yeah. I think hopefully with time, like, they can come around mm-hmm. and like, learn yeah. to love you. I think really just maybe allow them, allow them that space that they mm-hmm. need. And maybe, yeah. you know, if, if you feel like, you know, it's been some time, maybe just try to have a casual conversation about it and like try to just like see what the temperature's like. And mm-hmm. like give them that space, and hopefully with time they turn around. I think a lot of people in the gay community that I've talked to really ha- giving them that time and allowing them that space is like mm-hmm. the best way to eventually be like, okay, they're they're okay to talk about this now. Yeah, and then maybe uh, it's probably few and far between, but like reaching out to like maybe other family members who like are a little more accepting of it mm-hmm. to see if they can kind of like bridge that gap mm-hmm. and like help you like both kind of like overcome that like mental hurdle about it. Well, I guess I have a question for you to end this. Okay. Matt. When you look back on the younger version of Matt, maybe the Matt before he went to college at DePaul, okay. what is advice that you would give him? Slow down. Like honestly, slow down. I feel like I had to do so much. I had like horrible FOMO, like literally like so like insecure. Like if I like wasn't like being a part of like this friend group or like talking to or going out to like this party or like being involved in like this activity. I feel like it really like wore me down like mentally, emotionally, even like physically. Just like kind of like just like slow down. Don't take don't um bite off more than you can chew because it's just gonna like run you ragged, I guess. And then also I feel like I should have been a little more um selective with like who I decided to like showcase so much of myself to. So I feel like I was very much so like an open book when I could have been just a little more closed. I think so. that's good advice. It's advice that I'm learning too. I yeah. feel like I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I overshare sometimes. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I'm learning that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, Matt, thank you for being here. If you ever want to come back, you're always welcome to come yeah. back on. But do you want to give everyone your, your socials so they can check you out? My Twitter is at Matt in 312. I'm like, I think so. Uh, and then my Instagram is at Matt J. Amazing. Got yeah. it. Thanks, well, guys. Yes. Thank you awesome. for being here, Matt. Thank so you. much fun. Awesome. Uh, you guys can follow us on Instagram at UnpackTHT and on TikTok at UnpackThatPod. Thanks, Wade. Thank you, Matt. And we'll see you guys next Thursday. See Bye, you guys. Everyone.